Hi, I'm Charles Deering, and we're going to replace the top and bottom clamps on a Seiko ST21. Stay tuned and see how it's done. Now there's a reason you might need to change out your clamp. Again, this is the upper one. What I'm really guilty of doing a lot on no matter what saw I use is over clamping. These things are not indestructible. If you really torque down on that, you can spread this gap in here. And this is designed to be parallel, meaning the end of the thumb screw and the set screw here have to meet in the middle. If they do not meet in the middle, you will get what you call a hockey stick on the end of your scroll saw blade. And that sometimes that takes adjustment, but a lot of times from the factory, they are already meeting in the middle, but you want to check that. But that's why most people would have to replace their clamps, and I was guilty of that very early on. Now, now and then, you can get by if you're not torquing it down. There's this little removable area in the end of this uh, thumb screw. Now that can get slightly angled or can wear a groove in it from a lot of use, which... If you're addicted to scrolling like I am, you get a lot of use out of these things. So that can be every now and then uneven, as well as the the end of the set screw that is inside of here. I won't take it out now because I'll show you one right here. This is a little replacement kit you can get from Seiko. That's S E Y C O dot com. I I forget right offhand what it's called, but I will put that into the you're probably seeing it right now on the screen. But it comes with two set screws and those little push things. <laughs> That's the official term is push things. I don't know what they're actually called. But they have these little bitty O-rings on there as well. And those push into the end of your thumb screw. So those can wear a little bit. So that's why you can get these and save your trouble of having to get the whole replacement. Now, there again, that replacement being because you likely over torqued. Now here's how we're going to disassemble the old one in order to replace the new one. Due to my positioning, I am going to do the ratchet on the nut rather than messing with the uh, Allen key because the Allen key is so bulky. I don't have individual ones. They're all on this portable deal. One is out. I don't know what size the Allen key is because mine are not labeled. Some people refer to it as a hex key, I call it an Allen key, but whatever floats your boat. Now you might think you're done just by taking those two uh, screws out, but you're not. There's two little sleeves in here. And you want to get something that's not, well I just threw that across the shop. You don't. It's just slightly bigger than the inside diam diameter of the sleeve. And uh, you just, I don't know what size screwdriver that is. Maybe it says on it. And of course it does not because that would be too convenient. But there's the sleeve and we pushed it right out. And the clamp comes right off. Now to put the new one on, you just put it on exactly like you took off the old one except in reverse. Obviously, you would need to disassemble these. They come with their own metal sleeves, so you don't have to keep track of the old ones. But we don't want to assume they're the same sizes either. Let's just uh, go with the new stuff, and let me get these off, and we'll get right back to it. Now, again, this one does come with its own sleeve, so uh, although they're already in there, you've got to take them out in order to be able to get them on onto the parts of the upper arm, and that's what we're going to do now. 
And again, you don't need any special tool to something slightly larger than the inner diameter of the metal tube and that'll, that'll push it right out. And this would be the correct way of orienting it. Grabbing the metal sleeve. That one's in. I apologize if I'm covering your view. Well, let me do the other one from the other side just to let you see. Now make sure you have both pieces of that upper arm in place or you're fastening to nothing. And I'm having a strange angle to try to do this. Now you got to note that there is a small washer on the screw as well as one that goes on after the screw goes through the hole and then the nut and we're going to do it that way because that's how it was you don't want to try to reinvent the wheel so to speak I'll do it hand tight for now just to get it together And you don't have to bear down on it. I mean, obviously you want it tight, but uh, and, and uh, you want it tighter than I just did. I'm just doing that to hold it into place for now. And we'll snug that up. not missing anything behind what I'm showing. I'm just holding the Allen wrench and tightening it with a ratchet. You can do whatever is easiest for you. And here in a second we want to check and make sure that the set screw and the thumb screw are meeting in the middle. And I took the thumb screw out to show y'all. Now we're going to go below and we're going to replace the lower one. Now on this one I'm going to remove the knob so you can see what I'm doing. Now you can get the diamond shaped knobs or you can get the round knobs. Round knobs to me might encourage over torquing but whatever's comfortable for you. Especially if you have arthritis which I've been known to have. Okay it's going to be just like the top one except for it looks a little different. Just make sure you're orienting it the correct way when you're putting the new one on. This one has the little metal sleeves as well and the new one will come with them as well I'll in my own light which is something we generally do don't we I feel so I don't get in the way of the camera so bear with me fumbling all over myself now I am noticing the bottom ones are on tighter than the top ones were I don't know if that's on purpose or not but I'm making note of it because I think out loud when I'm making videos Again, paying attention to how it's oriented so that when we put the new one on, we will know how it goes on. Now, by, it, by habit, I went to pull on it, but we haven't taken the metal sleeves out yet. And as I say, boom, bippy, we got that out. Now remember you have to take out the sleeves. So we did that and we are just going to slip it right into place. Again making sure it's, it's uh, in there the way it's supposed to be. Alright first one's in. 
then you just slip that other one in and just like the other one you put everything on in the reverse that you took it off making sure there's a washer on there and there's another washer and a nut on the other side Again, I'm just putting both of them on there by hand for now, just to hold them in place until they're both on, and then you just tighten them on up. If it was any easier, somebody else would be doing it. Now we snug it on up. I cannot stress enough how important it is to get out of the habit of really torquing down on the, when you're clamping the blade because I have ruined more than one clamping system by doing that and it's a really ha hard habit to break. But just experiment with what holds on just enough. Just, you know, each time, if it slips out, try snugging a little bit tighter. And if it keeps slipping out, now you, uh, you also wanna make sure and get any shipping grease. And what I mean by that, there are some kind of greases that are blades are shipped in so that they don't rust you know whatever the shelf life and such may be and sometimes that can cause slippage as well and just use alcohol or whatever the case may be to get that grease off of there and that will minimize that as well as as well as the sanding thing I was telling you earlier about the end there and the set screw and again because of the limitations of my camera I'm not able to show you real close at this time about the set screw and the thumb screw meeting in the middle, but just rest assured that in that slot there, you want that blade to sit right in the middle of that, and the set screw as well as the thumb screw need to meet there right in the middle. That way it doesn't tweak that blade one way or the other. Now you would uh, loosen this nut in order to tighten down or move that set screw if you need to, back it off or bring it in lefty loosey, righty tighty. And then you want to tight, tighten that down again while you're still holding the set screw. Now again, if you're having to replace upper or lower clamps, it's because even if you can't see by the naked eye, if you're torquing down too much with this thumb screw, it's gonna spread that gap a little bit. And it may not be real obvious to the eye, but this metal is not indestructible. It's composite metal. I don't know the particular makeup of it, but this is what happens with manufacturing processes sometimes. So just be mindful of just snug enough for it to hold. And there you go with that. And then again, if you're dealing with slippage and you don't see any kind of a gap, don't forget about the little set screws and the, uh, I wish I knew the technical name for them, the little parts that push into the end of the thumb screw. So this is a much cheaper option. All of their prices are very competitive. Their saw is top notch, huge table. That's what I love about it because I do large projects. But I won't keep you. I hope you learned something here. If, if I'm not able to answer your questions, please feel free to call Seiko or go to seyco.com. Thank you all for watching and scroll on.